Hello and welcome back to the channel, folks. I am your host, Vortex, from MobileMusicPro.com, your home for mobile music production. And if you're new to the channel, what we do here is we try to help and create more mobile music producers. Today is pretty exciting because we have a brand new announcement. And that is that we're going to be trying out a brand new schedule for the next few months where we're going to be premiering brand new videos every Wednesday and Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So since these will be live premieres, make sure to join us in the chat to ask questions, just say hi, or tell us how terrible we're doing. <laughs> It really is certainly going to be a bit of a challenge to keep up the schedule, but we're going to do our best. And that's because we really want to build up a large library of free content as fast as we can so that we can eventually start building up our premium tools in the not too distant future. But we'll be talking more about that later on in the weeks ahead. So stay tuned. Okay, now in today's video, we're going to be going over the five basic drum patterns that every producer should know. Now there is of course a ton more patterns out there than the ones featured in this video, but we did want to get the ball rolling. So make sure to smash the likes and comment on this video if you want to see a follow up where we explore even more drum patterns. In this video, however, we're going to be covering classic hip hop, trap, dance or electronic dance music or EDM, R&B and good old classic rock. We'll also try to be showing you a few different variations on each one of these patterns as well, depending on how much time we have, because we do try to keep these videos relatively short. We wanted to go over a few basic terms too, such as double time, half time, upbeat, downbeat, velocity, swing, and more. Now, just a quick note, though this video title does have Cubasis 3 in it, we will just be using its piano roll tool, which is a pretty common tool featured in just about every single DAW. So with that intro aside, let's get right into showing you these top five drum patterns and rhythms that every producer should know. Okay, now before we get started, we did want to mention that the link to these MIDI files can be found in the description below. Now, when building these patterns, it is important to note that the BPM or beats per minute is a huge factor when determining which genre you're going to be creating your drums in. This is where syncopation really begins to shine, and what syncopation means is simply when you interrupt the regular flow of a rhythm. These interruptions occur at different places based on the BPM and genre of the track. So we'll be pretty much demoing these patterns in order of how fast the BPM generally is for that genre. And now let's take a quick listen to the five patterns that we'll be playing with today. Okay, now throughout this video, I am going to be using the terms measures or bars, which is a measurement of length in our piano roll. And then I'll be referring to the individual parts within those measures as beats. So for example, B1, B2, B3 of one, the B1, B2, B3 representing the beats of one, which is the first bar or the first measure. Okay, now let's get to building these patterns. Okay, and the first genre that we'll be talking about today is classic hip-hop, basically 90s to 2000 hip-hop. And this genre usually runs around 80 to 95 BPM. And most of the drum sounds that we'll be using today actually come from inside of Cubase's default instrument, the Microsonic. And then other sounds that we'll be using today will be coming from other places such as iPadBeatMaking.com and Cymatics.fm. So the first thing we're going to do is quickly demo this loop for you and hear what this sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
and this hip-hop project that we'll be using today inside of Cubasis 3 here is going to be set to 83 BPM, and that melody will be coming from a Cymatics sample pack. Next, let's take a listen to the individual sounds of the drums. First, we have our kick, and then we have our snare, and then we have our two hat sounds. Okay, so let's start building this hip-hop drum pattern. So we have our piano roll pulled up here. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. And the first notes that we're going to input here into our piano roll is going to be the kick. And the kick will be on the one and three. So let's tap our draw icon and then start entering notes. That's beats one and three. So we go one, two, three, four, and then it starts over again on the next measure. So the kicks have been entered here on one and three, and now we're going to enter the snares on the two and four. So we'll find our snares and enter these on the two and four. Now, before we start entering our hats, let's add a couple of additional kicks here because hip hop is a very groove heavy genre. So let's go ahead and go back to our kick so let's add one more kick on the three and, which is one, two, three, and. And let's add one more kick right before the three for a double bump. And then finally, we'll start adding our hats, and those should be added on every other beat. And now let's quickly hear what that sounds like. We'll long tap our MIDI pattern and we'll loop that and play. Now that does sound very robotic, so there are a few tricks and tips that we can give you to make your drum patterns sound more human. So the first thing we're going to do is add something called swing, which is where we move our notes just a little bit off the grid, because no human can actually play perfectly every single beat. And so when we slide these notes just slightly off the grid, it does provide a more human sound. So the first thing we're going to do is make our snares be just a little bit early. So to do that, let's untap our draw icon because we're just going to be modifying existing notes. And then we'll go to the right hand corner and tap our grid to turn that off by tapping on the off. And let's find our snare and zoom in a little bit. And we're also going to lock the grid here by tapping the lock on the far left hand side so that when we play this back, the grid will stay in place. So now let's go ahead and move our snare over just a little bit. We'll tap our snare and move it over just a little bit. But what we want to do is we actually want to move both of our snares. So let's go ahead and undo that. And we'll zoom back out by untapping lock. And we'll make sure that we select both of our snares. And now when we move them over, they'll both be moved over at the same time. So let's zoom back in. Tap our lock. And move these over just a little bit. Now when you move your snares over, you'll also have to move your hats because as you can see, our hats are no longer aligned with our snares. So let's do that now. We'll untap our lock, zoom that back out, and let's select the hats that were above those snares. We'll zoom back in and move those over. And now we can zoom back out and hit play. starting to sound a little bit better already, let's go ahead and move the rest of the hats over just a little bit. So let's select those hats. Let's move the top hats over to the right a little bit since we move the bottom to the left. We'll zoom in and we still have our snap grid set to off so we'll move these a little bit to the right. And there we go. Now let's zoom back out. And finally, let's add just a little bit of swing to our double bump kick. We'll zoom in here a little bit. Let's make this a little bit smaller. And 
and move this just before the second kick on the three. And now let's zoom out, give this one more listen. And the next tip we want to give you to make your drums sound even more human is velocity. Now again, this is very similar to swing, just as every human can't hit every note perfectly on beat, they also can't hit it at the same exact velocity. So the first thing that we typically use this effect on is the hats. So let's select our hats, and the hats that we'll be selecting is the hats on the downbeat. As these are the hats I typically like to bring the volume down on. And in case you're wondering, the downbeat is simply the note that gets played before, the note that gets played first. The second row of hats are on what is considered to be the upbeat. Now to adjust this velocity, now that we have our hats selected, we just simply tap once down here at the bottom of the screen, and we can simply begin dragging these all down at once in volume. So I typically tend to go just a little bit lower. Let's leave that at 80. And now every hat on the downbeat will be slightly quieter than the hat on the upbeat. So we'll tap back on the grid to return to our piano roll. And typically for the kicks, especially on a double beat, I like to make the first kick a little bit louder than the second kick. So we'll tap our kick that comes just before the third beat on the first measure. We'll tap back down here on velocity and let's turn that up just a little bit. Just enough so it's noticeable, maybe 110 or 115. And we'll tap back on our piano roll and let's give this a listen. And that is all there is to it to make a classic hip-hop beat in Cubasis 3. And the third genre that we'll be creating drum patterns in today is the house or EDM genre. Once again, there are a bunch of subgenres here, but we'll be covering the high-level, more general versions of the genre. Now, house and EDM songs typically range between 110 and 130 BPM. And also remember that everything we talk about today aren't really hard and fast rules. The best songs always come from a combination of following and breaking the rules by doing your own thing. So just don't think that you do have to follow all of these patterns perfectly. Okay, so let's listen to the loop real quick. Alright, let's check out the kit that we're using today. We are using the AM House Kit 2 from Microsonic built into Cubasis 3. Let's quickly hear the sounds that we'll be using today. First we have our kick, and then a snare, and finally our hats. The melody is coming from a free sample pack from Future Music Magazine. I'm not exactly sure which one though, but we've had this one for a while. Now before we begin drawing in our pattern, we would like to mention that the kick and the snare are really the most important parts almost of the EDM and house genre. Because you will be hearing them all the time in the songs and they really really drive the energy and momentum. So let's add our kicks first. What we're going to do here is a 4 on the floor kick drum pattern or a 4-4 four, four pattern. So what this means is we are going to place a kick on every beat of our measure. So let's do that now and we'll tap our draw button and begin drawing in notes. All right, we've added our kick to every beat in this measure, and now we're going to be adding our snares on beats two and four. Let's go on two and four. And then finally, we'll need some kind of ride element, such as a hat or a shaker, pretty much anything that can apply a percussive use case. Now, usually we add eighth notes here, so let's find our hats, and we'll begin drawing those in. You can also apply these to every 16th note if you'd like as well. But let's stick to 8th notes for now, and we'll play that. You can also shift over the hats and have the kick only on the one and the three and to have more of a groove. So let's try that now. Now let's hear what that sounds like.
So pretty much endless possibilities, let's go back to our original pattern and begin humanizing it. Alright, just like before, let's reduce the velocity on some of these hats. So let's select our hats, tap our velocity at the bottom, and drag these down a little bit, and then tap our piano roll and hear what this sounds like. Alright, sounds good. You don't always have to add all of these humanization type of elements, adding the swing or the velocity, but it really does help in most cases. Okay, now the fourth genre of music that we'll be creating drum patterns in today is going to be R&B. And this type of music usually lands between 125 and 145 BPM. For our project today, we'll be sitting at 135 BPM. So let's go ahead and play the four bar loop for you now. For the drums, we are using various samples in our sample library that we've compiled and put together inside of a mini sampler preset inside Cubasis 3. Let's take a quick listen to the sounds that we have. First we have our high kick, and then our low kick, and then our clap, and finally our hats. Okay, now for this drum pattern, we're going to be starting with four bars or four measures instead of just the one. And the reason for that is because we do have different placement for sounds in different measures. So we can't just repeat the same measure over and over again until we've completed the pattern, which consists here of four measures. And then from there, you can take that four measure or four bar drum pattern and repeat that across your song. So let's begin entering our notes, starting with the clap. Now the accent of the beat, like the clap or the snare, usually can be on beats two and four, but when you're going around 135 BPM or higher, you can start doing some halftime beats. So for the snare, we're going to place that on beat three. So we'll tap our draw icon and go one, two, three, and then go to measure two and go one, two, three, Go to our third measure and go one, two, three. And finally our fourth measure. One, two, three. And now we're going to place the kick on the first beat of the first measure and the first beat of the third measure and on the two and right before the third beat of the fourth measure. This syncopation between the kick and snare is really key in R&B to providing that smooth, slow dancing groove. So let's place our kick on the first measure, and then the first beat of the third measure, and on the two and right before the third beat of the fourth measure. So we go one, two, three. This would be three. We're going to do two and. And for our hats, we're going to use a 16th note pattern. Let's begin drawing those in. And we can copy these across really easily by simply untapping the draw icon and we'll select these notes and copy these across. All right, let's hear what this sounds like. All right, sounding good. Now a pretty big musical property of songs these days, both in R&B, pop, and trap, is to have rolls on our hats. And what that means is essentially going from instead of an eighth note to something like a 32nd note or a triplet. And this is typically done right before or after a clap or snare. So let's create a hat roll right now. We're going to create ours right before the third bar. These are the two hats that we're going to replace with rolls. So first, Let's go ahead and select this hat here and remove it. And we'll tap the draw. And let's go ahead and set our pattern grid to 32. Now we can draw in our hats. And let's remove the other hat and replace that with 30 second notes as well. And let's see what this sounds like.
so as you can hear, those hat rolls really provide a bunch of extra flavor to the rhythm of the track. And the final genre that we'll be creating drum patterns in today is going to be trap. Now, the trap genre can range anywhere from 140 all the way up to 165 and even more BPM. And today we're going to be using drum samples from iPadBeatMaking.com, which has both free and premium kits available for Cubasis 3, which utilize the mini sampler in Cubasis 3. And for our melody, we are using a Cymatics Trap Chord Loop 3, which was originally in 160 BPM, and we adjusted it in this project to be at 150 BPM. So let's hear what this four bar drum pattern sounds like. All right, and now let's take a listen to what these individual sounds sound like. As you can see, we have our pattern pulled up. The first sound that we'll be using is a kick. And the sound after that is a clap. And finally, we'll be using the hi-hats. All right, we now have a brand new blank piano roll pulled up, and we will be starting again with four measures and have our grid size set to 16th notes. So the first sound we'll begin filling in is our clap. So let's place our clap on beat three of all of these measures, and we'll select our draw tool and go one, two, three, one, two, three, three. Now for the kick, there really is a lot of different places, a lot of different variety on where you can put the kick in your pattern. But for this beat, we're going to add a kick on beat one of the first and third measure first and then the first beat of the third measure. Now we're also going to need some kicks before and after the claps. So let's add one just before the third beat on measure one. And let's make sure that we are working in a 16th note grid pattern. So we'll go to our grid snap menu and select the 16th note. Now this is going to make it easier to draw in the patterns. So let's add that kick now right before the third beat. So we'll go one, two, three, and right before it. And now let's add another one in the second measure just before that clap, just before the third beat. And then let's go ahead and do a couple of double bumps. So let's add one kick right after the kick in the third measure. And let's add a double bump in the fourth measure. Okay, so now let's add our hats and those are going to be 16th notes. So we'll find our hat, select our draw tool, and begin filling those in. Now we can copy those. And let's paste those across all four measures. All right, we've pasted all those notes. Now let's hear what this sounds like so far. All right, sounding pretty good, but I think we need some more syncopation with those claps. I want a little bit more of a rhythm there. So let's add a few more claps. Let's add one more in the first measure and one more in the second measure. Let's add one more in the third measure, just before the end. And now let's hear what that sounds like with those additional claps. So it is a bit more of a complex rhythm, but it is more pleasing to the ear. And now finally, let's add some rolls in our hats, because it really wouldn't be a song in the trap genre unless we have those very famous hat rolls that have essentially made it now at this point in time into every single genre in music. So a great way to use some of these hat rolls is to lead into a clap or emphasize a kick. So let's first do some rolls leading into a clap. So let's unselect our draw icon so we can zoom in here nice and tight. And I think we're going to do our hat roll on this hat right here, right before our clap. So let's go ahead and remove this. And now we'll begin drawing in notes where the previous hi-hat note was. And let's hear what that sounds like. 
All right, sounds good. And now let's do a roll over a kick. All right, now let's roll this hat here, which is right above our kick. So we'll remove the note and tap our draw icon and begin drawing in our 30 second notes. Right above the kick. Now let's hear what that sounds like. All right, now as you can hear, that does emphasize that kick more. And now let's adjust the velocity of those rolls so they sound a bit more pleasing and less robotic. So let's untap our draw icon and go to our first roll. Okay, here we are at our first roll. Let's go ahead and tap the velocity underneath the notes and we'll grab the drawing tool. And I usually like to crescendo my hat rolls. So what that means is starting from low volume and then going to high. So we can just draw that out. And now let's do the same for the other roll. We'll tap that velocity and draw this out. And we'll tap our piano roll to get back. And let's add a little bit of further modulation. So let's add a filter. Tap the add effect, go to the internal effects and select filter. And now that we have our filter insert effect added, we're going to automate this by going to the automation. And then we'll open the editor and let's scroll all the way down to the track two insert, which is the track two filter insert. And let's select filter frequency. And we're going to draw this right over the top of our rolls. So our current roll is right here. So let's do that now. Let's tap the draw icon here and draw a little bit right over the top. And now let's draw in a little resonance. So we'll scroll back down again to our track two inserts and we'll find resonance. And let's draw a little pattern in there too, right above our hats. And again, let's make sure that our X's are all the way at the bottom here. And let's hear what that sounds like. So as you can hear with our automation in our frequency and resonance within our filter plugin, this really does add a little bit of extra flavor to our hat rolls. And that concludes drawing in our five drum patterns. All right, hello and welcome back everybody. We very much hope that by demonstrating a variety of different drum patterns, you can get a better general overall feel of what it's like to produce in a multitude of these genres. Because in the field, most producers tend to service a variety of different genres. Not only because that's generally what pays the bills these days, but also because trends in music are ever changing. And now with the advent of the information age, it has just gotten exponentially more diverse. Now you can certainly pick a lane and specialize in one specific genre, but it's good when starting out to be at least semi-proficient in a few of these different genres so that you can take on more projects to pay the bills. And folks, we just wanted to throw in one more quick announcement here at the end of the video, which is that we've completed our first version of our official Mobile Music Pro Army logo. This new graphic is designed to essentially represent the Mobile Music Pro community, and more specifically, those members that become official patrons of Mobile Music Pro. So if you are interested in going that extra mile to help build our foundation of support, then make sure to check out our Patreon website at patreon.com slash mobilemusicpro. And please let us know in the comments what you think of this brand new graphic. And of course, as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on this video if you enjoyed today's content. So until next time, everybody, keep talking music, and we'll see you later.